Long. Hi, I'm Dylan Diatli, and today I'm going to make ice instantly inside of a bottle of water by using the method of supercooling. The reason this works is once you, <clears throat> when you super, super cool water, it can get below its freezing temperature while not forming ice due to a lack of nucleation sites. The ice crystals have nowhere to form due to the fact that the water has been through the process of re reverse osmosis and is pure. So once you take the water out of the freezer, it's well below the freezing temperature, yet it's still at 100% liquid phase, and once you introduce a small shock into the system, ice will start to form at the bottom due to the shock, which creates nucleation sites, which grow upon nucleation sites, which grow upon nucleation sites, until the entire bottle of water is one big ice cube. You can also do this by pouring the supercooled water over a piece of ice or something else that is frozen and that will instantly form ice. I will be demonstrating this a few ways today. Thank you. So as you can see, we have this bottle of water that is still 100% liquid and just by slamming it down onto the table, ice has already started to form and that ice will nucleate all the way through the entire bottle until the entire thing is solid. I will now take the second bottle which is still 100% water fresh out of the freezer and I'll pour it over this blue ice commonly used in lunch boxes which has just been taken out of the freezer as well and we'll watch the icicles form. When the supercooled water hits the ice pack, it instantly turns into ice, and that ice gives the rest of the water that I'm pouring on top nucleation sites, and it just grows on top of one another. This same phenomenon is what happens inside the bottle of water whenever I apply a shock to the system. And like I said, that shock, which produces the first ice crystal, forms one ice crystal on top of another, which makes a few nucleation sites, and a few more form from the new crystal, and from the new crystal, and so on and so forth, until the entire bottle of water freezes. I'm now going to take this bottle of water, super cooled, 100% liquid phase. I'm going to pour it into this martini glass, and by applying an ice cube, I hope to freeze the water inside the martini glass. So I have my ice cube right here. Pick it up so hopefully we'll be able to see it better. And that entire martini glass went from super cooled water from this bottle to being a more of a slushy solution in this one but look at that this is the ice cube I applied and we have ice formations right here so by applying an ice crystal a piece of an ice cube to super cooled water giving the super cooled water a nucleation site I was successfully able to freeze 100% liquid phase water into a slushy ice phase with nothing more than an ice cube. So here we go. Bottle of water just taken out of the freezer. 100% liquid phase. I'm going to wipe a bit of it off. And just by introducing a shock into the system, nothing is going to happen 
because this water is not super cooled. The first three bottles that I did, I left, the first three bottles that I did, I left in the freezer for two, hour, two hours and 30 minutes. The water was at room temperature before and placed into the freezer. Placing the bottle's water in the freezer for that long allows the liquid water to cool below its freezing temperature so that it's super cooled and not yet frozen. This fourth bottle of water was not super cooled. It was only in the freezer for one hour and 30 minutes, one hour less than the super cooled water. This water's temperature is still above the freezing temperature of water. So whenever you impact it with a force, such as the first example I showed, ice crystals do not form because it is not below the freezing temperature. The way supercooling works is without any nucleation sites in the water because it's a sealed cap. All four bottles I used were sealed before I did the experiment, were placed into the freezer. They were able to cool below the freezing temperature. Since they were pure, they were sealed, and they went through reverse osmosis, there were no nucleation sites for the ice crystals to start forming whenever it got down to the freezing temperature. Whenever you introduce a shock into the system, that shock forms a nucleation site, which makes an ice crystal form, and that ice crystal has a dozen nucleation sites on it, so another ice crystal form on those sites, which just builds upon each other until the entire bottle is full. Same thing happens whenever you pour the water over an ice cube. Whenever you put an ice cube into the water, supercooling allows for instant ice. Liquid water goes instantly from a liquid phase to a solid phase by using supercooling. Well, there you have it. I instantly turned liquid phase water into solid phase water from liquid to ice by introducing a shock into the system of a supercooled bottle of water. I hope you enjoyed my experiment. Once again, my name is Dylan Diatley, and this is for my Fall 13 Solid Mechanics project. Thank you. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. I sit back with my brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly, flow like a hawk daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. Turn off the lights, and I'll close. Extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal. Light up a stage and wax a chump like a candle. Dance, crush the speaker that booms. I'm killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom. Deadly, when I play a dope melody, anything less than the best is a felony. Love it for.